In this video, we're going to see the various tools that we have in Blender to optimize and basically reduce the number of polygons in the meshes that we're using. And we can either increase or um, decrease the number of polygons depending on the need. So if we want to do a low poly uh, object or a high poly object. Now I'm going to show you uh, two examples. So this one here is uh, a Blender file originally was made in Blender and this one here instead is OBJ. So we're going to see how to open it directly with Blender and also how to import a mesh from the, the outside. Uh, if you have your mesh, you can definitely use your model, your sculpture. Otherwise, I'm going to show you where to get these two. And if you're interested, you'll find a 3D character design video course for digital sculpting in the channel. So let's go here and go to the web. And to get the cut statue, you can go to Polyaven, go to models and search for the cut statue. I've already created another guide showing you how to download models and textures from Polyaven. So just select the cut. And if you want to see the structure as it is at the moment, you can go here in the clay mode visualization. So you can see the wireframe right here. Now wireframe mode, it's really important to understand the structure of the 3D model, which is also called the topology. So usually when we manage the polygons and then the density of the polygons, the number of the polygons, we're gonna affect the structure. We're gonna change the topology. So this is, you can see a pretty uh, linear topology is really uh, good. Uh, it's well organized, it's not like a random. And this probably it's uh, a sign that this model was modeled uh, with polygonal modeling by the author. And it's, uh, there is no uh, photogrammetry here, not 3D scanning and uh, no optimization as well at the moment. But uh, it optimizes a little bit with the texture, of course, to get all those uh, concrete effect. Okay, so uh, you can click here, you can select the Blender type of file. This is the, the texture size and then you click on download and you save it in your computer. Now the other example is from Sketchfab and again we created a video guide on Sketchfab so if you want to know more. But uh, this one here is cool. It's called Bust of Rosa. So if I click here again I can get some more information. For example if I click here down here you see you have this button. It's the model inspector. And I can go in the wireframe mode here as well. Now you can see that this doesn't appear as organized and well structured as the other. If I zoom in, I can see these are not four sided polygons or faces, but they are triangles. And this could mean two things that this was done with uh, photogrammetry. So they use a 3D scanner to get this from an existing object. And uh, also it could mean that this was already optimized a little bit so uh, the the number of polygons was too high and they reduce it so either way this is the structure and it's a little bit different from the other one and also it's another format now this is the auto right here all the information are right here the, the number of triangles and if i click here i can get more model information i can see for example that this one here is obj it's not blender so we need to import this we cannot open this directly now, if you find it difficult to download this stuff, you can check the Polyaven video guide and the Sketchfob video guide. Now, to import or open the, the cut model, all you need to do is just go to File, Open, and navigate into the folder where you store the, the file that you downloaded. Again, we created video guides about this. So, uh, for this one here, instead, you need to go to File, Import, Choose OBJ. And again, navigate, you can see this is the OBJ file and just select import waveform object. Now, another problem you have when you import instead of uh, opening a, a file is that you probably need to work with the texture. So here I just dragged and dropped the texture here inside and I just connected this uh, diffuse texture to the base color. That's all I did, nothing else. So really basic operation, but if you're having problems with this basic operation, you can check the Blender video course in the channel to start from the basics. Now, uh, we have these two and let's see what we can do. So uh, let's start with this one here. So uh, if I go up here, 
first of all, I can switch into material preview so I can also see what happens to the materials and the texture, which is really important to understand. And also another thing I can do is to activate the wireframe. So you can see what's happening also in terms of topology, in terms of structure. Also, I'm gonna decrease the opacity of the wireframe just a little bit so we can see the texture a little bit better. There you go. So now we can see both the wireframe and the texture. So let's begin with the first uh, op um, modifier that we can use. Now, one uh, first modifier that we can use is if we go here to sculpt mode. So let's say we wanna sculpt on this. And by the way, I can already sculpt. You can see that I can change the topology by sculpting on the mesh. And um, so uh, to affect the polygons, I can go here and use the simplify. This is the one you wanna use. If you wanna simplify, uh, you wanna increase or decrease the number of polygons and the density in a particular area of your uh, model. So I need also to switch from, when I activate simplify, I need to switch from normal mode into dynamic topology mode. So I need to check this on. But let's read here. Dyn topo or dynamic topology will not preserve colors, UVs, or other attributes. So let's see what it means. You can see it just gets rid of the texture. So I cannot keep the texture. I cannot maintain the material nor the texture when I use Dyn topo or when I use the simplify. Now let's see if I click and brush over this, you can see it's not changing the, the topology, but it's just increasing the, the number of polygons. So this is not optimizing. This is like increasing the level of detail so that, that I can go even more into details if I want to sculpt on this. So let's go back to simplify again. What if I want to optimize and reduce the number of polygons? Then I need to go here to Dyne Turbo and I need to change here the resolution if I use the cost and detail or the detail size if I use relative detail. So you can see now that if I brush, I am decreasing the, the, the polys. So the, this is becoming a low poly statue and it's losing a lot of details as well. But this is the way I can reduce the size and I can optimize. Now, unfortunately, I cannot keep the, the texture. Now, if I want to go the other way, I can uh, change the detail size and make it smaller. So let's make it 10. So you can see now I'm increasing again the number of polygons and I can now sculpt more details if I want. Okay, what uh, if I want to do something to the overall mesh? Well, in that case, I use custom detail and I do detail flood fill. So everything gets filled with that resolution. Again, you can see the, the main problem is that I'm losing the texture. Now, let me just go back and there you go. So this is where the texture is there. Now, the other tool is Remesh. We can use it from here. We can use it as a modifier. We created other video guides, both on Remesh and uh, this one here, and also the Remesh modifier. So I'm just gonna go quick and apply the Remesh. Now, what's going to happen with the remesh is the same exact thing that happened with the Dyne Topo. It's taking some time and eventually it's going to appear. But uh, the problem here is that, again, it's going to lose the texture. Okay, you can see it here. I've applied it to the cut because it was taking too long and it uh, required too much memory. So you can see that this is the remesh. I can go back and forth. I can increase, decrease the number of polygons. And again, this is just if you want to work with the geometry, with the mesh, you don't care about the texture. Otherwise, this is not good because it's, you're losing the texture and perhaps you need it. So here I can then apply or just delete this modifier. And let's go back to the original object with the, with the texture. Okay, so how we can maintain the texture and still decrease or increase the quality of the mesh, well, we can use another modifier, which is called decimate. This is the one you want to use if you want to keep the texture. Now, it has many options here, but the main one is to collapse, which means collapsing the edges that are already there. So right now we have 6,000 uh, face counts. So we have 6,000 polygons 
more or less, and this is the ratio. So if I decrease this bar, if I click and drag, you can see it's decreasing the number of face count. Now we are at 2000, but you can see we lost some of the detail, not too much, because most of the details are on the texture. So thanks to the texture, we can decrease the quality of the polygons and create a low poly object. So this is 5000, this is 3000, you can go all the way down, but you can see this is the this is not good. So by clicking and dragging here, you can find the good compromise between the number of polygons and the quality of your model. So you can see, you can play around with it and find the correct uh, solution. So this will be all for this video guide. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated. If you want to thank us, please join the channel as a supporter. Again, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.